Hello everybody and welcome back. I am KRX and we are continuing this beginner playthrough for the Ottomans. We are in our second war actually. It's only 1450. The Ottomans, you know, historically uh, and also just uh, sort of the way the game's set up are, are meant to kind of be uh, a little bit of a, a conquering kind of a nation. A very powerful nation with a lot of weak uh, nations around them sort of ready to be ready to be conquered a little bit. And so we have gotten into our second war already of this run through. And I think last time we did a good job at actually slowing down and looking and reassessing kind of the situation that we're in. But I will kind of apologize for the fact that we're not really going with the plan, right? But that's also kind of the beauty of the game. We saw this really interesting opportunity um, where we could attack Albania that would actually call in Venice. We were just kind of poking around, looking at our options, looking at the diplomacy screen, seeing who's allied to who and who's connected with who. Turned out Venice was actually guaranteeing the independence of Al Al Albania here. So we're like, okay, great. We have we have cores on Albania. This is rightfully our land. In fact, this is better than claims. We're actually going to be able to take this land from Albania for really, really cheap and almost no diplomatic penalty because everybody kind of recognizes that hey, this is actually rightfully our, our, our land in, in a real way. Um, so we're kind of fighting that war with Venice rather than fighting the war with Byzantium. But what we're doing is we're actually liberating Byzantium from Venice so that we can then go in and, and beat up Byzantium for ourselves, which is kind of obviously sneaky. But that's, again, just taking advantage of the interesting situations, taking what was ultimately a bad situation with Venice sieging down Byzantium before we could get there, sort of beating us to the punch, and flipping that around and actually sort of making it into our advantage and, and sort of winning uh, the situation entirely. It's kind of a win-win for us. It's kind of a lose-lose for them. But the first uh, institution has spawned. Now, we haven't talked about institutions at all. We could hit this to go to Monfrère. Looks like it has spawned in Monfrère. So the, inst the Renaissance has spawned here. Countries that have not yet fully embraced the Renaissance institution will receive a increasing technology cost penalty of one per year up to at most 50 percent that's not good we do not want to be paying a 50 percent penalty on these technologies that's insane right no way uh, we can see that the renaissance is 0.0 percent but this will continue to scale right one percent per year if we click on this book we're now on the technology screen right and I click on our country here go to the technology screen and we can go to the institution with it's like a sub tab and we can see the renaissance has spawned the renaissance has spawned there it is and we can see it's actually it's slowly spreading these are some of the areas of our country here that are getting a little bit of a, of a spread 0 0.05 per month that's it's minuscule minuscule it's spreading but it's like it's like barely spreading right is it barely spreading not very quickly um it's going to spread a little bit faster from here and it's literally going to spread out right as these countries around here sort of gain it, it it is literally going to accelerate the rate at which it can spread through the country but we're we're a little bit farther away from the high development europe right italy france like sort of germany like this is the area that's like really high development it's going to spread much faster there there's a lot of sort of um poorer land in the balkans and in Hungary and, and, and such, it's actually going to take a little bit harder. It's going to be a little bit of a harder task for it to actually get through here and get to our country. And even our country is not exactly as well developed, right, as sophisticated as the Italian nations, for example. It's one of the reasons why the Renaissance spa spawns there. Also, of course, historically, we can we can picture the Renaissance spawning in Italy. So this is a technology roadblock. These institutions are technology roadblocks. These are things that we're going to have to embrace in order to maintain our technology uh, advantage um, with the sort of more developed nations in, in Central Europe. Now, we're not that really that far from Europe, right? There is there is spread going on all in these areas. It'd be much more difficult to be playing as India. There's nothing going on. There's no Renaissance. No, there's no whispering of the Renaissance or anything over here in Indonesia. Like, it's very, very difficult. So there is a, there is a means that you can actually sort of help um, get these different institutions, and that's by developing your country by developing your country so and one of the ways you can develop your country is with these monarch points you can spend these to uh, gain technologies and then we can also spend these to actually uh, spend these to actually get uh, stronger provinces so this is a sixth development province we talked about that a little bit just throughout the, the playthrough here but we can actually spend points to actually gain um, more base tax or more production or more manpower right so we can increase the sort of the 
sophistication of the province, the development of province, the economic benefit of the province, that's all good, right? Sort of what we call building tall. Like we're building up our own internals. We're strengthening our nation within, and we're spending some of these points to do it. But if we actually read here some of the benefits, right? Extra monthly tax income, blah, blah, blah. Renaissance. There's actually going to be 1.16% renaissance. So what we can do is we can actually plug up one of these uh, one of these provinces and we could just develop it up a lot until that becomes 100 percent renaissance so every time we hit one of these we'll increase we'll be increasing the renaissance in this area and if we can get to 100 percent, we actually create a beacon we create a beacon where it can actually spot it can spread quickly the reason why these areas here they're spreading but they're spreading so so faintly because they're not actually truly adjacent they're spreading because they hit a certain there, there's certain high the relatively high development province like Constantinople and and this is a 14 development province and this is 12 development province right that's higher than six six is quite low 12 is is pretty good so they're spreading in any of our higher development provinces six again doesn't spread it looks like 10 it actually kind of seems like anything that's at 10 it's there's a natural spread in any province that has 10 or more but this number right here is very very low because there's no adjacency if we look next to the renaissance itself we would see a huge spread probably on these nearby. Uh, half a point there, 1.0 per month. It won't take that long until this is filled in, right? And as your country fills in these areas here, like 1.0 here, so on and so forth, but base a 2.5 a there in Genoa proper, which is actually like that means just in a few, year, a few years, that's going to embrace the Renaissance, right? And as you have provinces within your country that embrace the Renaissance, you can actually pay money to essentially uh, compensate and, and it'll sort of spread through every everybody um, by paying essentially um, a, just a, a fee, basically. So we can see that we need to get to 10%. Would it be able to embrace this country wide? We need to first earn 10% spread, basically. We need 10% of our provinces to embrace it individually. And then we can pay a bunch of money to basically get the other 90 essentially sort of just just embrace and, and and be able to remove that technology penalty it's a little bit of a nuanced system unfortunately it is the, in the base game for people whether you have the dlcs or not it's just something you got to deal with playing in europe and we are kind of on that edge of europe and asia right we're kind of the east meets west situation going on here playing in europe though it's not as big of a deal because you kind of like most of these institutions are going to spawn in europe like colonialization and global trade um manufacturers enlightenment these are concepts that fundamentally not guaranteed some of these things could spawn in beijing or they could spawn in uh, in delhi or, or other places around the world that are, are de highly developed areas um, but in general we kind of imagine a lot of these things sort of spawning in the european and western culture and that's kind of true that's kind of how it's set up it, it spawns in europe and it spreads through europe and then it spreads to the rest of the world and we're going to have to play that game of, of bouncing around that in in sort of uh doing the things we have to do to um to embrace those institutions what we can do actively to embrace those institutions so that's a little bit of a process it's a little bit more of an advanced feature um but we do have to mention it because it's appeared it's it's happening it's upon us you know what i mean the renaissance is upon us and we need to embrace that so we will probably eventually when we get a lot of points built up and we want to stop paying this right now the penalty is zero percent still so if we get a little bit of dibble if we get a little bit of admin we still might want to sneak these these two technologies before the penalty gets too high maybe we sneak the military one before the penalty gets too high there because you're you know so on and so forth so but once that penalty gets to be obnoxiously large we're going to need to look and see how we can actually like work our country towards embracing the renaissance and we'll talk more about that in the future in fact we have a big spy network right now on byzantium i'm realizing we can spend some of that where we've built up 48 we could actually spend a little bit of this we already have a claim on this province here, which is a fort province. We have a claim on this province here, which is Constantinople. That's the really big, important one. We have a claim on Athens, which is really good. So we've done a good job to actually get claims on these provinces ourselves. So we could also try to build a claim on one of these other ones, and they're relatively equivalent, it looks like. So we're just going to grab this province here, get a claim, and that's going to spend a bunch of points. Now for the next one, I think we're going to need like 35 or 40 right it's going to be more expensive because we've already built so many claims on these guys and we need a 35 spy network i don't i honestly i don't think we really need to do that right now i think we have the claims that we need currently so we could bring that diplomat back and we could have them doing some other things we could technically try to get the alliance with these guys but we're at war right they don't want to do that while we're at war we could try to butter up some nations that kind of don't like us 
that much. Um, if there's anybody in the region that's a little bit bothered by uh, what's going on, we could try to buffer up, uh, you know, Wallachia or Hungary. Oh, Hungary really hates us. We could work on some of these other countries, though, that don't mind us. And we can make them a little bit happier. Serbia doesn't really like us, but, you know, it might be worth actually kind of making Serbia, uh, you know, pouring some oil on troubled waters there with Serbia, making them a little bit happy. Naples actually could be a nation that, that maybe it'd be nice to have a little bit of extra happiness with Naples. They don't really, they're threatened by us. Well, they're actually, that's right. Naples is actually in a personal union with Aragon. So maybe we don't really care that much about Naples after all. So we do have these Luca troops in here, right? So we've taken an opportunistic war. We've taken an opportunistic war. It looks like our, our light ships are, are sort of ready to go here. We can sort of rejoin up the Navy here a little bit. These guys are, are moving to intercept. Oh, nice. We're going we're gonna to battle them here. This is farmland, so there won't be any penalty here to the fight. Um, we are sneaking in. We are catching them there. So this symbol right here, I didn't, there was a sword, right? That sword means that you'll catch the enemy. There will be a battle. You'll catch them and there'll be a battle. So we just ended up wiping out the Lucan army. And Luca doesn't actually have any troops. They're feeling uh, at high enthusiasm. That might change at the next month because we just literally stack wipe their entire army. We could spend a little bit of diplomatic power to get some mercantilism. Mercantilism, of course, is very good for boosting trade and stuff like that. Usually to buy a mercantilism, which we can do. I'm not, we don't need to talk about all that goes into mercantilism, but to buy this by ourselves just normally costs 100 Diplo points. 100 Diplo points to buy one of these. And I believe mercantilism, it, 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 provincial trade power modifier, embargo efficiency, merchant guild loyalty equilibrium, all kinds of good stuff that help them. But that really, that provincial trade power, right? Meaning that our provinces provide more trade power. They're, they're more, it's the land that we control contributes more to controlling the trade in a region right so this 57 percent would be higher if we had more mercantilism that makes sense provincial trade power so mercantilism is very good we can spend 25 diplo to get one usually you have to pay 100 to get one that's a huge discount that's a, otherwise we lose trade efficiency no i think we'll just pay a little bit of diplomatic power and get a mercantilism permanently we've now earned one mercantilism and we can boost this up to like a hundred percent i think right it's just something that you know through events and stuff it might be going up and it just sort of passively helps us get get more trade power in these these areas and stuff it's really really good so that was a good battle there with them uh we do know that the venetians are standing on this with their army i do really want to sneak down here but i'm just kind of wondering oh yeah serbia really just isn't all isn't about Serbia doesn't want us to move through their land. It's kind of a bummer. We could ask for military access through Serbia. We could ask for military access through Serbia. That would let us just sneak right in there and get there faster. It is going to cost us an extra diplomatic relations while we have this military. I think we want that military access through Serbia. Because these guys, I, I think we want to uh, get there a little bit quicker. A little bit quicker. We'll have these guys come over to sort of join up and, and sort of reunite. And I think we're going to try to fight the Venetians here on this fort. They're at a minus 21% on that siege tick. Looks like we've just got someone. It just said that we got uh, QQ here up to 100 plus one. See, they're not at plus 100 actual. Uh, the opinion of us is still balancing with other factors like aggressive expansion, religious schools, uh, heretic religion, stuff like that. But to see that improved relations is plus 100. So that is maxed out at plus 100. That modifier is maxed out so if we want to keep boosting their opinion we need to do other things like like uh alliance and 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 protect them and and, and other sort of beneficial trade things and, and and stuff but we've gained the plus 100 that we can get that way and i think we said that we were going to potentially just make uh, well we don't really need to make naples happy if we make aragon happy. well aragon doesn't like us well it's going to make happy in this region that might be a little bit upset well here's the thing Let's, let's, we could go down to the war thing down here where we have a 24% uh, war score right now against Venice and Albania. We could click on this. We can see how we're doing. We don't have the war goal yet. That's kind of a problem. So the enemy is getting uh, progress right now because we don't have the war goal. This is the war goal. Now we're at 21% chance to siege it. That's totally fine. Okay, the Venetians have moved off of this and they've moved up to here. So we could try to catch him somewhere. I don't want to fight him in the woods. 
but we could try to catch these guys in in like an open field like over here this is a this is a farmlands that would be a good place to fight we can go to a, terrain, a simplified terrain map mode to try to see where the hills are and where the four the woods are and anywhere in this flatland the farmlands and the and in the grasslands and stuff like that all of this is a good place to fight up here um so if we can scare these guys into this area and then get them into a battle that would be really really good they have a pretty weak general too compared to r3331 they just have a zero two is zero zero now the two in shock is good so that's that's probably this if you only had two pips it's good to have it in that shock area but that's not by itself that's not fantastic um, we could take these troops over here and we could try to sneak them and, and sort of ambush this little group right here although we do have some ships that are very injured right now so i'm kind of wondering if maybe we dock these ships and we get them repairing a little bit and we wait to do some more naval combat once they're fully at full strength that might be worth it so just going very slow here we're sieging this down we need to get that 21 percent good there these guys are not really doing anything we are working on desieging byzantium here so that they can continue to win their war against venice that'd be very very good um, we have sieged down noxus which is the venetian vassal we've sieged down some of the venetian land that's connected to our country although we have not sieged down corfu Corfu would be something that we could easily reach and we could work on. We could move these guys plus these guys to do Corfu after that, but we'll involve using our navy to liberate this straight crossing. This navy right here is preventing us from moving to Corfu. Yep, can't get there. That's asking us if we want to do an automatic transportation using the fleet, but we don't want to do that because we want our fleet to go repair really quick. Um, and, and we're going to clear that up. We're going to clear up this gulf here. Um, with our navy once they're fully repaired over here now we're, all we're basically doing is thinking okay these guys need to rejoin they might be able to join up with the army here just kind of micromanaging these guys and again if we wanted to break up the units we can use create un new unit type and this is how we can create two different sort of army standing armies within like break up that army or we could just hit split in half here so there's different buttons here i actually unfortunately have taken this for granted i think i've done this i've created new unit types and not explained this process but essentially i i, I what i did I think we did a good job last time explaining why we were going to war with Albania and how that was benefiting us. And I think we're showing how that's working, right? Venice is losing their war against us, but they're also losing their war against Byzantium. So they're getting sort of double, double humiliation there a little bit, right? And they're not being able to actually expand and imperialize this area like they wanted to. So that's really, really good. Um, so I think that makes sense. I think that's coming together thematically, but... One thing I wasn't talking about is the micro, the, the actual movement of our troops and stuff and why I was doing that in order to, to win the battle and stuff. But these 15,000 guys, it's a good army right there. And essentially what we're trying to do with these army, this army, we don't want our army to be uh, too many cavalry, uh, cavalry units. If it's over 60% cav, we take penalties. We actually suffer an insufficient support. These cav need a certain amount of infantry support or it just doesn't quite work out. So let's go. We're unpausing here. I'm going to go down to speed two. I really want to kind of follow this closely here. They're kind of, we're kind of trying to estimate. This would be really good. We can, we can hover over them. See, they are moving into this area. We have three maneuvers. So the river crossing here is not going to be a bad thing. That is a good fight. They're locked in. Let's go straight for it. Let's see if we can get there quickly, or they might try to move out of there pretty quickly. Let's see if we can catch them. We caught them. We caught them here. Let's get these 4,000 to make sure they get there as quickly as they can to reinforce. This should be a good battle, though, because we have 5,000 more troops. We have more discipline, more morale, significantly more morale, because we just got a new technology. In fact, it looks like the Serbians are just absolutely ravaging the Venetians right now. We might be able to actually take this fight to Venice. We might be able to take this fight to Venice. If we watch this battle here, fire phase, we rolled really poorly. The Venetians rolled really well. But we did, we do actually do better than them a little bit here because we got a three fire modifier from our general being a three better fire than them. Next phase during the shock, we rolled much better than them and our generals better. The net gain, the net difference of our generals is a plus one. It's a three to a two. So that's a plus one. We have better discipline. We have better military tactics. We have better morale. And we absolutely just, demo we completely demolish them. Venice just got completely wiped out. Now here's the thing. The war over here is actually against, right? The war is against. We'll send 1,000 back to help out with Albania because we have lost the amount of dudes that we needed to sufficiently siege this, right? We're, we're at 5.7. We need 6,000 here. It says there's a requirement of 6,000 to siege this. So that's not going to do. Although, wait a second. I already had some dudes over here. Let's get these guys up here. Let's get those guys up there. Okay. 
So, so these troops are going to go over to Venice proper and, and sort of cause some havoc there. We no longer need the military access with the Ser Serbia. So we're going to have these guys safely get out of here. And then we're going to cancel that so that we can not have that extra diplomatic uh, re uh, relationship slot that's costing us points right now. It looks like we have a couple options here. We can get a philosopher, yearly prestige cost. This is an advisor with Turkish heritage and following the Jewish faith. Um, he's going to be 50% cheaper. 50% cheaper and we'll gain a bunch of prestige. We already have 50 prestige. That's pretty good. More is better, right? Um, it's also hard to maintain a high amount of prestige. If we go to our advisors, though, 50% cost is really, really good. But right now we're not paying for anyone. Is he a level 1 or he's a level 2? He's a level 2 at 50% cost. It's going to make him 2 ducats per month. For a level 2, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Alternatively, we could just take some money. You know, I think we actually get this guy. I think a level 2 at half cost is going to be great. He's only going to be a, a duck at 50. A duck at 50 for a level 2 guy. Usually those guys cost 3 gold, right? So this guy's going to be fantastic. We didn't have a, an advisor, so let's slot him in there. Um, the fact that he's Jewish actually doesn't really matter too much. Um, it just means that there could be just some different events could pop up based on that sort of desync of religion, like our advisors being different religions um, could have an effect in, in terms of the future event. We're losing money. Now, there's something we could do about this, actually. At war, we can actually sort of rally our country a little bit, unify our country a little bit, rally everybody around the idea of war taxes. We can actually use war taxes. This will cost us two military power per month, which is not great, but we're making so many military points per month, and our economy is struggling right now. We, we already have a loan out. We don't want to take more loans out. I think we actually do military taxes for the rest of this war here, and we'll see... This reduces land maintenance. It reduces the cost of our armies and our land, basically. Thematically, it's raising taxes, right? We're raising taxes, but what this is doing uh, is it's actually making it much cheaper to field our army. So let's see what this does to our economy. I don't know why it's not updating right away. We're making a profit. So with war taxes, we are making a profit. Now, that is costing us very precious military power, but that's okay. We're still gaining military power. No issues there. These guys are going to come down here and hopefully we'll be able to siege, um, get these sieges done, right? We're working on this one down here. Byzantium's actually standing by. They'd probably be able to take care of this themselves, but we're going to help them out there a little bit. We're sieging down Albania. That's a big war goal that we're working on. And we are now officially standing in Venice. Well, not in Venice proper, but, but we're near Venice, sieging down a fort in their main country just wreaking havoc over here, which is pretty hype, which is pretty hype. Venice is at war with us, but they're also at war with Serbia. Serbia is not, Serbia technically might even be sieging something down too. Where's Serbia at? I don't know where Serbia is at. I don't know if they're doing anything or not. I don't know if they're doing anything or not. Let's, let's end our alliance, or not alliance, sorry, our military access with Serbia. That was unnecessary. That was costing us diplomatic power. We're still, still spending diplomatic power for Ragusa. And we're still spending it for the royal marriage with QQ. We can't get rid of the royal marriage with QQ without losing stability. So we're holding on to that until that goes away naturally. Over time, as as people, as advisors and, and queens and heirs and kings, and as they die and pass on and stuff, royal marriages will just kind of break over time. Right now, we have actively have a royal marriage, though. Um, let's spend. Hoorah. We have finished the siege there. Let's actually get these guys in position to siege down Corfu. And to do that, we're actually going to need to bring the Navy around. How's the Navy looking right now? We can hit a button here to detach damaged ships. And we can see there's only one really damaged. There's only one galley that's like super damaged. All the others are ready to go. Let's send them out. Let's go, go, go. Let's move, move, move. Now, the Venetians are nearby, and they have a very powerful fleet. I guarantee if we look at this screen, we can see how many their entire Navy force is much larger than ours. We're at a, we have 5, 8, 12. They have 11, 20, 17. This is just a really small stack right here that we might be able to ambush. If we can control this for just a moment, we'll be able to get troops across the strait and into Corfu, and that'll be really, really good. Most of the Venetian um, army or navy seems to be in this region right here, so they will be able to reinforce. We see 11,000 of them here, so it's still scary, but hopefully we'll be able to do enough shock and awe right here. I'm hoping that shock and awe right now is going to allow us to get across this strait. But if, Na if, if Venice chooses to reinforce this, this will be bad. Looks like those ships are being docile at the moment. We'll see if they come in. We're going to keep an eye on this, but it looks like they're just hanging out. They're just chilling. 
We've won. We've won the naval engagement. We need to cross now. Venice might try to defend that straight. But it looks like they're not. They're choosing They're choosing not to. If we engage into this fleet, I guarantee Venice will, will dogpile on top of us. Um, Venice will... Not, they're more... Actually, what they're doing is they're protecting... They're... They're protecting uh, Venezia here. That they're protecting Venice by not allowing... Um, these ships to come up into here. So they're just kind of holding back and, and sort of protecting their own seas. Totally fine by us. There we go, though, guys. We have freed up Byzantium. Byzantium is now winning their war. They are actively winning their war against Venice. And that might actually just start, sort of lead to a white peace as we continue to beat up Venice ourselves. I'm actually kind of wondering if we can get around here. No, we cannot. We can't, like, sneak through Austria and get around to this over here. If we're feeling really gutsy, we could try to actually go in and attack Venice here, but I don't think this will end well for us. Are these guys on the move? Nope, they're just hanging out. They're just hanging out. Right now, we're definitely going to be beating up this navy. I don't know if Venice is going to change their mind or not. We're just keeping an eye on this battle. This is definitely a win unless Venice reinforces. They don't seem to be wanting to reinforce. Now we know oh, they're reinforcing now. They are, I don't know why what took them so long there. I don't know what took them so long there, to be honest. Um, let us actually escape back over here. And it doesn't really cost us much to lose a battle there, right? The war goal is based on taking this land in Albania. Us losing a naval skirmish where no ships even got sunk, that's that's not going to account for anything. We do have some lazy diplomats. We already have a bunch of claims on these guys. We know we're going to potentially be getting a bunch of claims on these guys as we take Constantinople and work on sort of um, work on Greece and stuff. You know, there's a little country in here, actually. A little yellow country in here. Genoa. And Genoa is actually in Italy. We were talking about Genoa a little bit because the Renaissance spawned over here by Genoa. Genoa actually owns this stuff. I don't know if we're going to get free claims on them or not. What we could do is we could actually build a spy network on Genoa, though. That could be good for a future conquest. It'd be very easy. It seems like it'd be very easy for us to take that land back from Genoa. In fact, actually, there's Genoa's up here, too. Holy cow, Genoa's a crazy little country. They have little bits in here. They have bits over here. That's actually sort of their main, what we think of as Genoa, Italy, right? But they even have little bits over here. And now that we actually control this province, in fact, they have a claim on our land. They have a claim on Crimea. They have a claim on Crimea and the rest of this actual Crimean nation here. Um, we actually have a means of getting claims on these provinces and taking these from Genoa and sort of taking some of these valuable trade areas, right? This is a very important trade center. This is an important trade center. Any of these, when you go to the trade map mode and you look at provinces and you see these little symbols here, these are, these are provinces that are disproportionately more valuable to influencing trade in that region, right? And we can see here that some, not very much of this money is actually going to Constantinople. That's not good. We want this money going to Constantinople. But if we controlled all of these trade ports in this area, if we controlled these vital provinces, we'd have more influence over this, and more of this money would be coming down to Constantinople, where we can collect the, uh, the rewards to that. So going to war with Genoa up here actually makes a lot of sense, not just because of these islands here, but also because there's stuff up here that belongs to Genoa. And we know that just because we, you know, I've played the game and I kind of just understand who Genoa is, but we can, we can just look around and just be really attentive to our surroundings and stuff and kind of figure that stuff out as well. It's interesting to think that, um, how are we at zero? How are you guys at zero percent? I mean, you guys have sieged down. You guys have actually sieged down land. They're at 26. Byzantium is winning the war, like actively winning the war against Venice. That's insane. That is insane. Luca's at high enthusiasm for some reason. So we could see like a separate piece, right? We could see if Luca wants to go away. No, they're not interested. Even though we stack wipe their, their military, they're just not interested. Can we move to Luca? No, we can't. We can't get to Luca. What we could do actually is we could use our fleet. Oh, this is interesting, guys. We could bring our fleet over to Luca. Since Venice doesn't really seem to care about this area, they're more protecting themselves. Let's bring our fleet, fleet around here. And let's actually go blockade Luca and see if that actually wears on their their enthusiasm for war. We seven, we got it. We got a little a thousand Venetian troops coming down into here. Let's go uh, kind of make sure those guys don't 
get up to too much trouble here. So we have 7,000 dudes back home here. And yep, we're going to come up here and, and just engage with them. Now, I, it's going to be a long time before we get the siege, right? This is a big, heavy ca uh, castle fort. It's taking a while to siege that. We could go back up to speed three. We could also just go in and sort of just poke around the war screen. If we take this land for ourselves, who's going to care? They won't even do this, apparently. So we have to get Venice out of the war. We have to get Venice out of the war. But you can see this is going to cause almost no aggressive expansion. There's no overextension because we've already cored this land. This is already our land. This is going to be very, very cheap. So we're easily going to be able to take this land. Nobody's going to care. Four, four aggressive expansions. Serbia is not going to care. Hum, you know, Hum's not going to care. Ragus is not going to care. Bosnia is not going to care. None of these people are going to care. And that's because everybody recognizes that this is already our land. This is already our land. So we just need to get Venice out of the war. If we siege that, Venice will want to leave the war um, by having our navy here blockading Luca. There's a good chance that hopefully Luca will feel a little bit uneasy. And they'll have a little bit of a... They're getting a penalty here for being blockaded. They're going to be taking some war exhaustion for being blockaded. And eventually their enthusiasm is not going to be so hot. It's not going to be so hot. We're also sieging out Corfu here. And that's going to be a big deal too. Unfortunately, it looks like Venice is sort of like expanding their sort of uh, influence here with the ships. Oh, wait a second. Are they coming this way? They might be... No, no, no. They're just, Luca's kind of just like cruising around here. With Venice, they're just kind of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We're at speed 3 right now. 28% on that, that's good. When this falls, that's going to be really, really good. Because that'll be a big turning point for uh, for Venice there. War against Venice. Let's, in fact, we could go up to speed 4. We're just kind of hanging out. There we go, this has fallen. That means we can move to there and engage them here if we wanted to. Continue to siege down more of Venice. Looks like they're already kind of on the move. So we're sieging down more of Venice. Or do we actually have a clean path now? Do we have a clean path to Luca? That's that's an interesting question. We do. We have a path to Luca if we want. If we sit on Luca, they'll definitely leave. But I don't know if it actually is going to come to that or not. Um, I, in, in fact, Venice is on low enthusiasm right now. They're really not feeling this. They want to get out of the war. ASAP. ASAP. Looks like we have an event here talking about uh, you know mysticism versus legalism. We could go back to our piety screen and see if we're basically right in the middle. We could go any which way here. We could go any which way here. And I think we decided that we liked the technology cost reduction, the national tax modifier, the manpower modifier. Lots of good stuff for going for legalism. Um, we could see a local missionary strength if we go uh, mysticism. Okay, it's not terrible. And then we can also... Um, that's actually only in one particular region, right? That's in the, the sort of Macedonian region. This is all already, we're not going to be converting this land. We don't need to convert this land. Just being, yeah, I think legalism is going to be the choice there. These guys are just running for their lives. Hmm. I don't want to fight any, if there are rebels here, I don't want to fight them. So let's go around the rebels. Standing on Luca with the blockade, they should be able to leave the war now. Let's get Luca out of here. Get, will they give us war reps? They'll actually pay us to leave. So we could take some money, we could take some war reparations. So they'll pay us to leave this war. That's fantastic. I hope we don't get black flagged here. We did get black flagged, but we should be able to move back into this territory here, which is controlled by us. So hopefully that'll count. Hopefully that'll count. Let's get our navy. Oh, our navy's taking some damage here. Uh-oh. This is not good. The heck? Athens is sieged Crete? Holy cow, that's actually pretty impressive. Okay, let's try to let's try to sneak down here. Sneak around the Venetian fleet because it turns out that our 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 units actually got very damaged here. They got very damaged by doing that. They're taking a lot of attrition. And, I, and, and Venice is going to notice that. They'll, they'll detect the fact. They can see that her ships are weakened um, because the AI is just sneaky like that. Although, what are you guys doing here? No, go back. To, okay. These ships just dis disembarked because they accidentally selected them. Get, get, get home, get home, get home. Wow, we barely got home in time. Where are our navy? Where's our navy? Well, we really need a very vulnerable navy right here. It needs to sneak around. 
Looks like there's going to be a battle here with... Um, nope, let's not do that. Oh, too late. Too late. Could be a battle with Albania. We just outwhel we overwhelmed them. We didn't capture any ships, though. Okay, we just overwhelmed them. That's okay. Ooh, we got back. Our ships got back here, which is good. Oh no, our leader died. Our leader has died. Our military leader has died, guys. We have a decent amount of war exhaustion. We're going to have to sort of... And it looks like these guys are actually coming back to try to de-siege that. We are going to want to intercept these troops and attack these troops here. We're definitely going to want to do that. Um, and we're going to need to get another general. And I think we're very close. We're at 66% war, war goal with Albania. And I think we're at the point where we're going to be able to peace out. Uh, we're going to be able to peace out Venice. We've peaced out Luca, and we should be able to win this war and move on to Byzantium here soon. So we're just kind of like, the Ottomans are a good lesson in war, right? And we'll continue to look at, you know, aggressive expansion, overextension, internal stability, and how we manage these things while we're going to war. Thanks, everybody, for watching this episode. I will see you guys in the next one.